In this lesson, I'll show you how to calculate the velocities of colliding blocks. This is an elastic collision problem. The question reads, a 1.5 kilogram block traveling at 6.0 meters per second strikes a 2.5 kilogram block that's at rest. After an elastic collision, what are the velocities of the blocks? When dealing with elastic collisions, the two objects that are colliding bounce off each other. So there's no energy lost after the collision due to a deformation, for example. Compare that to inelastic collisions. That's when you have two objects that strike each other and subsequently combine. So here we have a bounce. To calculate the velocity of two objects colliding after a collision, you need to remember this formula. So here we have two objects. So let's call the very first object A. So that's the 1.5 kilogram block. And the second object we'll call B, just so that it corresponds to the formula here. Before the collision, you label it with a subscript 1, and after the collision, you label it with a subscript 2. And that's what accounts for the 1s and 2s that you find in this formula. This part says the velocity of block A after the collision is equal to the following. Let's calculate that. The velocity of block A after the collision will be its mass, which is 1.5 minus the mass of block B, that's at rest, over, again, the mass of block A plus that of block B. All of this will be multiplied to the velocity of block A being 6 decimal 0 meters per second. Now, the good thing about this question is that block B is at rest. So this factor is equal to 0, and anything times 0 makes nothing. So all of this becomes zero, and all we have to worry about is calculating that. Now let's calculate this. 1.5 minus 2.5 makes negative 1. And in the denominator, 1.5 plus 2.5 is 4. So that very first part is negative a quarter. Multiplying that by 6, we get negative 1.5. What this suggests is that the block that is striking the other will rebound negative 1.5 meters per second. The negative suggests that it will move in the opposite direction in which it was striking the one that was at rest. Now to calculate the velocity of the object that was at rest, you have to modify this formula so that this is velocity of block B after the collision. And it's actually easier than you think. So wherever you see VA1, you would write down VB1 and where you see VB1, you would write down VA1. Also, this would change to M sub A. So we have 2 M sub A. And this would be M sub B minus M sub A. Now, there's a reason for all this. Of course, if you had derived the formula, you would see why this all works out. The good thing now is that if you take a look at VB1, which was the speed of block B before the collision, it was at rest. So this becomes 0. And anything times 0 makes 0. Therefore, this whole term goes to nothing. And we have VB2 is equal to 2 times M sub A over M sub A plus M sub B times the velocity of A before the collision. All right, now we have to substitute our values. 2 times 1.5 over 1.5 plus 2.5 times the velocity of A before the collision, 6 decimal 0 meters per second. Now, of course, you should always include the units while you're doing this, but I've left them out just for simplicity's sake. Now at this point, 2 times 1.5 makes 3, and these two make 4, multiply to 6 decimal 0. 6 times 3 is 18, divided by 4 is 4.5. So 4.5 meters per second. Therefore, block B, which was at rest, the one that's being struck, moves off at 4.5 meters per second. And there you have it. That is how to calculate the velocities of two colliding blocks experiencing elastic collision.